Greetings, pilots and passengers. Today, I'm going to talk to you about an incredibly important topic, protection, and why it is vital when you're starting out on your journey and wanting to work with spirit. When I communicate with spirit, I ensure that I am well protected to prevent any negative or dark forces intruding on the communication and having an influence on myself or my loved ones. A few years ago when I began attending a spiritual development circle, I was taught that protection was very important. However, at the time I didn't realise how crucial it would be. We made sure that we were protected before we opened circle, during and then when we closed circle. I feel lucky that I've been able to naturally transfer these skills and this routine over to my own circle. However, I feel like if I hadn't have had this guidance, I believe that I wouldn't have known that protection was necessary to begin with. This could potentially lead to encounters with negative entities, people just looking for mischief, and potentially something much worse, but we're not going to get onto that. Even now, I have had run-ins with negative entities who want to make life difficult. They often intrude during sessions to cause confusion and provide false messages. They have even disrupted my sleep and invaded my dreams, looking to scare me and mislead me. Of course, these experiences would likely be much worse if I hadn't have protected myself or asked for protection from those working in love and light. So I have compiled a list of ways that I protect myself that I'm going to share with you now. I hope that you can use these for yourself and hopefully come up with your own methods of protecting yourself. One of the main methods that I use to protect myself is by reciting the Lord's Prayer. Before any form of communication, regardless whether it's physical or direct, I like to recite the Lord's Prayer either out loud or in my head. Either works just as well, it doesn't matter if you say it out loud or you say it in your head. I like to use the traditional English version of the Lord's Prayer because I like the way it sounds and it flows much easier. But the modern version of the Lord's Prayer would work just as well. It's personal preference. I believe in a higher power, not necessarily a God so to speak, but you don't need to be overly religious or Christian to have to say this prayer. It is simply a well-known prayer asking for protection, therefore it's about the intent behind it. Secondly, I like to use homemade prayers. Along with the Lord's Prayer, I like to repeat my own prayers that I made up myself. These can allow for focus protection, such as asking for protection from spirit guides or particular angels like Archangel Michael. I like to repeat these prayers several times and I'm going to give you some examples of the prayers that I say. I ask for protection from my angels, guardians and spirit guides working in love and light. I am safe, protected and surrounded by love and light energy. I invoke the light of God within. I am a clear and perfect channel. Light is my guide. I either say these prayers in my head or out loud. It doesn't matter, but I say these prayers several times each. For me, saying them several times replicates the intent and strengthens the protection, but also it represents the Holy Trinity. Asking for blessings and repeating prayers is something that is very important if you believe you are under attack by negative forces. Repeating these prayers or blessings is a great way to get help from your loved ones working in love and light. My third method of protection to protect my energies and also protect myself before communication, during and after are visualisation techniques. This can include positive thoughts, visualising yourself being protected and actively fighting the dark energies. Before meditation or communicating with spirit, try visualising yourself surrounded in a cloak or bubble of love and light energy. This energy is radiating gold, it's pure light, it's your pure light energy. State that this protective shielding cannot be infiltrated by any negative forces, accepting only those with positive intentions who work in love and light. There may come a time when your defences are infiltrated by dark beings or negative entities. You might see yourself surrounded by darkness with your light cloak appearing ineffective. Instead of succumbing to the dark energies, fight back. Picture your light energy blasting out from within yourself. Picture this light energy completely overwhelming the enemy and annihilating them. If dark forces can attack you, why can't you use the light to fight back? When I was being attacked during my sleep by a negative force who was trying to scare me in my dreams, I envisioned a nuclear light bomb being dropped on my house. I pictured myself flying in a plane with my spirit guides, pressing a button and dropping this bomb filled with just light energy, pure light energy, love and light, and that it destroyed the being. Of course, this negative being tried really hard to crash the plane, cause all kinds of technical difficulties. Yes, dark entities and negative entities can influence your thoughts and even try to put you off your protection game. My next method of protection is wearing a protective symbol. For example, for me, I like to wear a cross. 
When I first started my development circle a few months back, I never wore a cross. I didn't feel it was necessary and I always saw it as a religious symbol. My spirit guide, my uncle Andrew, suggested right at the start that I should start wearing a cross. He suggested that I should wear it all the time, not just during spiritual development circle. It seemed weird at first, but then I realised it does its job. It wards off negative entities and any mischievous souls who are just looking to monkey around. For me, it doesn't act as the typical holy symbol that many of us see it as. Instead, I see it as a symbol of protection. It is the intent behind the symbol that fuels the protection. My final method of protection is asking the spirit you are communicating with to prove their identity. When communicating with any spirit, it is important to not let your guard down. You shouldn't believe everything a spirit tells you. If a spirit tells you that they are your grandma, granddad or uncle, make sure you test them to ensure that you are actually talking to who you think you're talking to. I've had many experiences where a spirit I was communicating with over a spirit board or pendulum wanted me to believe that they were a relative or spirit guide. They wanted me to believe that I was talking to Uncle Andrew when in reality I wasn't. Once I test them three times, if they are a negative entity or simply a mischievous soul passing through, they will always fail. To test a spirit, I repeat this command three times. In this instance, I'll use the command that I use to prove that it is my Uncle Andrew that I'm talking to. According to spirit law, if you truly are my Uncle Andrew working in love and light, please say yes. I always say this command three times to represent the Holy Trinity. If a spirit is telling the truth about who they are, they will always pass this test. This means that communication will be able to continue. If a spirit fails, I will ask my guardian angels and spirit guides to come and take them away. These are forms of protection I use when communicating with spirit and to protect my energies daily. Hopefully these methods of protection will help you when you're starting out on your journey, although you can always come up with your own methods of protection that suit you. My methods of protection, the prayers I use and sayings that I use can be found in my blog post which is linked down below. I'd love to hear about how you protect yourself when you communicate with spirit, so let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video and are looking to transition to pilot, why not subscribe to Dare to Fly today and get ready to take flight. And as always, Fly high, fear less.